I would like to apologize to you, guild members. I don't think Patreon is such a good idea for the type and style of content I do here on YouTube, especially with the rate at which new videos are made and uploaded. So for those that have pledged support for us, I'll list you in all future videos and you'll receive all the benefits outlined on Patreon, but for everyone else, the Patreon page will be shut down. Hopefully you all understand, and if you want to support us, just watch the content you want to watch, or purchase some of our t-shirts and stickers in our stores. Thanks guys, happy holidays, and happy new years. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. Twenty eighteen, huh? Unlike the ghastly YouTube rewind for twenty eighteen, in which nihilistic, cynical corporate money has weeded its salacious tentacles deep into the minds of the higher ups of the somewhat dying site, Edge will not fall prey to the same vices. Fortnite be ah! We're trying to do something with just a tad of dignity here, okay? And you're all a part of it. So, in the true spirit of the holidays, and of the impending new year, let us take a trip back in time to the beginning of the year and essentially summarize all of the most important discoveries in paleontology and paleoanthropology. Who knows? You may have missed something. We certainly did. Just so you're not caught off guard, I'm joined today with some of YouTube's top paleontology educators and entertainers as a show of creative collaboration and the passion we all share for easily one of the coolest fields of science. Along with me, you'll hear the voices of Spino Dude Reviews, Dino Man, Prehistorica, Henry the Paleo Guy, Ben and Ollie from Ben G. Thomas, Trey the Explainer, Cretaceous Cast, Bionicosaurus, The Paleo Archive, and KikiZilla101. January! Allodesmus Demere. Seals are fun, aren't they? Big, imposing, regal sea doggos with a penchant for numbing on fishes, and being the chew toys of the largest predators on Earth. Their evolution is far stranger. A nominal case of water meets land meets water, seals are descended from terrestrial animals that looked like the otters and weasels of today, and eventually took to a more and more marine way of life. A new species of an already established genus of prehistoric seal was named and described as Allodesmus demere. Though fragmentary, this new species includes much of the spine, skull, some ribs, and pieces of the flippers. Vulcanops Jenny Worthier. Just when you thought vampire pets were the creepiest critters to go bump in the night. New Zealand one-ups it with a newly described giant, burrowing, omnivorous bat. Though the researchers only found some jaw bones and teeth, those bones suggest a bat three times the size of modern, non-flying fox type bats, and weighing almost a pound. Vulcanops, which translates as volcano bat, was in no way related to vampire bats, but that wouldn't stop it from nibbling off a finger or two. Though not something we would be frightened of, it certainly gives a new meaning to what goes bump in the night. Kaihong Jujai The coolest thing for dinosaur nerds is the discovery of soft tissue and the discovery of preserved colors. The advent of new technologies has allowed us to view the smallest preserved structures in the most beautifully preserved fossils. This lets scientists look at the cells within a dinosaur's feathers or skin, called melanosomes. These cells 
are what produce pigment, and the shape of the melanosome corresponds to the color of the pigment. Kaihong Zhujai is a new Peruvian anchiornithid dinosaur described from late Jurassic China. The fossils of the animal show a pretty little beastie with asymmetrical flight feathers on the arms, legs, and tail, much larger and better for powered flight than what you see in Archaeopteryx. Kai Hong also had a pair of bony crests in front of and above the eyes, which is not seen in any other members of the group. But the most amazing aspect of this obese pigeon-sized animal was the preservation of color. Melanosomes preserved in the material are shaped in a similar way to the melanosomes seen in modern birds that have bright, iridescent plumage that sparkles and shimmers, making Kai Hong one of the brightest examples of extinct dinosaurs we know of. Cutenescolex barbarensis The Cambrian period is one of the most alien sections of geologic time. Nothing lived on land. Everything cool was in the water. Thanks to some of the best fossil sites in the world, we can get a quick glimpse of the true diversity of these times, which allows us to generalize to some degree how it might have been like ocean-wide. A new species of ancient polychaete worm was described from the Canadian Burgess Shale. This new underwater creepy crawly looks like a segmented polychaete worm, but has some characteristics which suggest it is more closely related to the annelid worms, meaning it may represent an evolutionary step in that direction. Oldest humans! An international research team put together by Binghamton University did an analysis on anatomically modern human fossils from a cave in Israel. They found the fossils to date to around 175 to 200,000 years ago, pushing the known origin of anatomically modern humans back 50,000 years before what scientists had previously thought. It would seem it is becoming clear more and more groups of animals, including us, have been around a lot longer than we had ever thought before. Archaeopteryx numero 11 Long-time fans of the Expeditioner's Discovery Guild Enterprise will be familiar with the long and sordid past of Archaeopteryx and its various fossil material. Archaeopteryx is an important creature in regard to the connection between avian and non-avian dinosaurs, and was a veritable monkey wrench when first discovered. Researchers have found the 11th specimen of Archaeopteryx, and it just so happens to be the oldest known specimen from 150 million years ago. Mansaurosaurus shahine. It is always a treat when new sauropods are discovered, made even more special when one is found with most of its parts intact. Mansaurosaurus is just one of these unique special treats including pieces of the skull, lower jaws, vertebrae, ribs, part of the front legs, and a set of osteoderms, this is about as complete a sauropod as you can hope for. Not only is it fairly complete, but it comes from the late Cretaceous of Egypt. This period in time is largely fragmentary and unknown since most fossil material from Africa originates from the dry, deserty regions, as it is difficult for fossils to survive in the jungles. This new Titanosaurian sauropod fills in some gaps in the knowledge of late Cretaceous dinosaurs of Africa, and only more will help to complete this puzzle. February Amber be thy name. Amber is one of the most interesting substances. Hardened tree resin excuded from the plant when it is injured becomes fossilized and turns into a gemstone that has been admired and used as jewelry by humans for tens of thousands of years. It also happens to be one of the best substances for preserving the remains of prehistoric animals. Animals trapped in amber as they die are preserved just as they were when they entered the orange deluge. This lets us see exactly how the outside of the animal appeared millions of years after they went extinct. A piece of dinosaur tail had been discovered last year, but it has been topped by the brand new discovery of an entire bird encased in the honey-like amber. 
The new amber find is of an enantiornithine bird of sparrow size, which has decayed to some degree before it was completely mummified by the amber. But even then, it preserves much of the plumage, beak, and other soft parts you just don't get to see in your average stony fossil. Chimera rachni yingai. On the subject of amber, yet another prehistoric fossil mummy was discovered and described. This time, instead of a bird, an ancient spider representing a long dead lineage was found. Chimera rachni lingai represents a new group of spiders with male pedipalps and well developed spinnerets, like modern spiders but with a whip like tail sticking out of its rear. Chimera rachni belongs to the Arani which is the older that includes all modern spiders, but represents an earlier divergence on the family tree. This means that during the mid-Cretaceous period, there were a lineage of whip spiders that would likely have had a history all the way back to the Paleozoic era. Wallisaurus reappears. Wallisaurus massare is a species of ichthyosaur discovered by paleontologist Dean Lamox of the University of Manchester in 2016 after it had been uncovered in 1996. This year, a new specimen of the ichthyosaur was described off of a bone donated to the university from a private collection of fossil collector Simon Carpenter. Dean Lamox was able to find something new just lying around the collections of a museum, which seems to be the best and easiest way to do so these days. You should follow Lamox on Twitter though, he's real cool. Candelorhynchus Padelier A new species of Cretaceous fish has been described from Colombia. Though the fish is unique in being the only one of its family known from both Colombia and South America, the story of how the find was made is where the magic happened. A young boy was touring the monastery of La Candelaria when he spotted what appeared to be a fish fossil in one of the stones used on one of the paths in the building. He took a photo of the fossil and sent it to a local museum. That museum sent the image to the University of Alberta and they recognized the fossil as something new. They retraced the boy's steps and found the fossil resulting in the description of a new species of fish as yet unknown from this region, a region not so great at preserving fossil material due to heavy jungle influence. March. Oh no, there goes my tail! Capturinus is a member of a group of reptiles of the same name are some of the weird offshoots of the Permian period. A study by LeBlanc and others was undertaken to analyze the tales of the bizarre yet seemingly familiar little creatures. The researchers found that these reptiles have vertebra in their tails perfectly adequate for the job of breaking, in a similar way to a lot of modern lizards. This study proves the existence of the defensive tail dropping mechanism in a separate unrelated lineage of reptiles, which also means it's a darn good defense that works enough to be used for hundreds of millions of years. Asandananus nestleri Five articulated specimens and preserved soft tissue results in one of the most interesting and complete animals you can find. The fossil forest of Chivnes, Germany has graced us with a new species of reptile-like animal with affiliations with the Pelicosaur proto-mammal lineage, but retains some more reptilian features like scaly skin and semi-squat lizard-like legs. A Sandananus nestleri, as it has been named, shows adaptations in its general anatomy for an arboreal lifestyle such as the long curved claws firmly planted within the toes, long skinny torso, and big ol' feetsies. Archansaurus Fridayi Ornithomimosaurs are easily some of the fastest non-avian dinosaurs we know of. Though paleontology now knows of a bunch of these speedy Gonzaleses, there are very few primitive or early forms of the ostrich mimics in the lexicon of fossil taxa. Though unreliably fragmentary, a new ornithomimosaur was found from the American state of Arkansas. 
known only from a foot, Archansaurus fridei represents the earliest known basal ornithomimosaur from North America and the only known lizard hip dinosaur from the state. Though it would be nice to have more material, a foot'll do ya. Colobops noviportensis. The skull elements of a possible rhynchosaurian reptile was described from the Triassic deposits of New Haven, Connecticut. The remains, though only of the head, show an animal with openings in the skull for such large muscles that may have had a bite force similar to or greater than any known living or fossil diapsid reptile of similar size. The blunt skull of Colobops would have been used to great effect in whatever it is it ate. No teeth were preserved with the skull, so it is not certain what these creatures were chowing down on, but whatever it was, must have been tough. Mandasuchus taniakin Mandasuchus is the genus name of a newly redescribed Sudasuchian archosaur from Tanzania. This animal was discovered, briefly described, and informally named in the 1930s. Its name has been provisional this entire time, and researchers finally formally described the remains and gave them their due. What the fossils tell us is the story of a nearly 3 meter monster that was somewhat related to modern crocodilians and would have been chowing down on dicynodonts and maybe even the earliest proto-dinosaurs. April She's preg as me thinks. Understanding the basic processes of an ancient organism is a difficult task the more well-preserved fossil specimens found, the better our understanding becomes. Though we can speculate and hypothesize on how certain prehistoric animals behaved, how their internal structures worked, and what it was that killed them, a fossil literally preserving the answer is one of the few surefire ways to confirm any suspicion. Currently, there are over a hundred specimens of the marine reptiles' ichthyosaurs, with preserved embryos within them. With the vast array, it is now possible to construct a timeline of embryonic development, and some even preserve the offspring trying to exit the mother as they both died, a confirmation that these animals gave birth to live young. A new specimen of an ichthyosaur, possibly Stenopterygius, has been described from the collections of a fossil collector Martin Rigby by paleontologist Dean Lomax. The new specimen preserves at least six and probably eight unborn embryos within the mother, a landmark number of babies all in one place, as well as one of the few to come from Britain. Ichthyosaurs continue to surprise us. Tratienia rosalesi Megaraptorans are some of the most enigmatic group of dinosaurs we know of. There is a good chunk of them that have been named, but not a single one preserves enough fossil material to be considered anything more than fragmentary. Megaraptor itself is known from a few pieces of the arms and legs and fragments of the skull. A new Megaraptoran has been described from Argentina, but unfortunately it is also rather fragmentary, preserving the sacrum, a good section of the vertebra, and a little bump at the end of the pubis. Tratiania rosalesi, though fragmentary, just so happens to hold the bones missing from all other Megaraptorans, giving a more complete, generalised picture to the rest of the family. Macrosqualodelphis acubacai The river dolphins of today are funny, weird animals, always looking like they're squinting to see you better. These animals are on the decline due to habitat loss, pollution of their rivers, and human encroachment. They're the last survivors of a clade that has been around for a while, at least back 25 million years ago. A new fossil river dolphin species, Macrosqualodelphis acubacai, was described. It includes most of the skull, some of the back vertebra, and some of the flippers. The fossil material discovered suggests an animal larger than all other contemporary dolphins and one of the largest of the family, Squalodolphinidae. Peritrecius martini During the Cretaceous period, North America was split down the middle by a shallow sea called the Western Interior Seaway. Amongst the proliferous remains of snake-necked fish gobblers, broad-chested shark-tailed sea monsters, giant bulldog-faced fish, and man-sized aquatic birds were an army of large ovular jellyfish munching turtles. Turtles are some of the easiest animals to fossilise because of their big sturdy shells, which often gives the false impression that they were the rulers of the world. 
A new species of ancient sea turtle hailing from Alabama during the time of the Inland Sea has been described as Peritresius martini. Though the genus has been known for a while, this new species has less ornamented dermal plates on its shell. May File O Chrysa Wangai Anyone with even the remotest of interest in nature knows there are tons of insects that have adapted to be one with their surroundings. Leaf insects, stick bugs, praying mantids, and literally thousands of other species have done so because it is a really good and useful trick to become nearly entirely invisible to something that wants to eat you. A remarkable new fossil insect shows a similar adaptation to hiding amongst prehistoric liverwort. Phyle Ochrysa wangi was named off of specimens which represent the larval stage of the insect that belongs to the lacewing family. And the insects themselves have projections out of their exoskeleton that mimic the foliage of liverworts that have been found in the same deposits. Magyarosuchus phytosai A nearly complete skeleton of a fossil marine crocodilian has been discovered. Despite what modern crocs would suggest, there have been a bunch of different offshoots and lineages of the crocodile-like reptiles since the early Triassic. Some took to the oceans and developed shark fins and whale flippers, and just such a creature was the blow-up doll-sized Magyarosuchus phytosai that flopped its way through the seas of Jurassic Hungary. Perohinidus atensensis before the advent of turtles, a group of reptiles took to the heavily armored, sometimes aquatic, sometimes not, lifestyle we associate with the slow-footed boxy turtles of today. These were the Siamodontoids, and they were incredibly similar to turtles in many ways, but different from them in a few key aspects. Unlike the singular bone box of a turtle, the Siamodontoids had a bony shell and sometimes a shell on the base of the tail, or the back of the neck. Most had long tails, and teeth made for crushing prey and possibly vegetation. A new member of this group, Parahinidus atensitsis, has been described from a singular partially preserved skull. The Big One Hyneria lindae is a species of lobe-finned carnivorous fish from the Devonian period of Pennsylvania. Described in the late 1960s, it was originally named only on the basis of a partial skull and a few scales, but new specimens prepared over a period of 25 years have shed new light on the complete anatomy of the predator, which measured 1 50th the length of the world's longest hot dog. With teeth twice the size of the modern great white shark, Hyneria was the terror of the waterways and would have snapped up anything it wanted, like Becky when she's off her meds. Who, who's Becky? I, I don't know who that is. What? What? No, I, I don't want to do that. All right, all right, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I promise I'll read the script. Please just don't hurt my- <laughs> Baby sail-backed croc snoot duckling lizard. When it comes to babies, our natural instinct is to think of them adorable. And that's fine. Ancient babies are cool too. And recently, a single piece from a little baby, Spinosaurus, has been described. Spinosaurus has weaseled its way up into the top 10 dinosaurs, and is now as recognizable as Tyrannosaurus rex and Triceratops, despite how truly fragmentary it is. A single toe claw has been found that probably belongs to a baby Spinosaur, of some affinity. And since it comes from the right time in Morocco, it may have been a Spinosaurus baby as well. The little claw is flat on the bottom and not very pointy nor very curved, which is an adaptation for flat, possibly webbed feet used to wade through mud and water on a regular basis. This adaptation is seen in the adult Spinosaurus, and finding it in a baby means the animals were adapted for water, no matter which way you reconstruct it. Megacorella washtillerai. Paleontologists as a whole tend to love being dramatic and hyperbolic about fossil animals. You can't really blame us. Folks so passionate about the coolness that oozes from creatures many times the sizes of anything around now that we act like children and get a little too concerned about our own ideas. Sometimes though, the titles and monikers and record breaks are deserved. And one of them has to be attributed to Megacorella watchtillerai, a new mid-Triassic age reptile. 
dubbed the world's oldest lizard, the reptile shows characteristics in its bones that it was near the origin of the Squatomates, the group of reptiles that include all living snakes and lizards. Dating to the mid-Triassic period, the new Squatomate pushes the evolution of the group back many more millions of years than previously thought. June. Cacavius Jason. We've previously touched on the amazing qualities of amber. They stop small animals in their tracks and encapsulate them in a crystalline coffin. The secrets of fossilized amber continue to be forthcoming, and a new species of teeny tiny insect was named from an even smaller specimen frozen in amber. Named after Jason from the Greek myth Jason and the Argonauts, Cacavius Jason is a member of the Featherwing beetle group, which means the little insect had wings that looked like feathers which help it ride the wind currents with ease. It also helps being 0.5 millimeters long, which is longer than a period at the end of a 12-point sentence. Hey, wait a minute. Gorgoing, going, gorgon. Ops. Two new proto-mammals have been described from Russia, including Gorionicus, Masiutne, and Noknitsa geminidens. Both of these proto-mammals belong to the Therapsid group, which contains most of the animals prowling around the Permian period. But Gorinicus specifically allies with the three acephalians, which have enormous heads and usually short tails, while Noknitsa belongs to the Gorgonopsian group, which usually have shorter heads and longer tails, and of course, saber teeth. Gorinicus is the size of an overly fluffy Newfoundland, with the enlarged canines characteristic of the group it belongs to. Noknitsa was a tad bit smaller than the Gorgonopsian, and had thinner, needle-like teeth and a narrower snout. Both of these beasts were named after far more supernatural beasts from Russian folklore. Gorinikus after the three-headed dragon Zme Gorinike, and Noknitsa after a predacious nighttime spirit of the same name. Ticks and Tricks a series of unfortunate events led to the worst day in one tick's life 100 million years ago, in what is now Myanmar, which resulted in its death and entrapment in, who guessed it, amber. This amber discovery consists of an ancient red tick which had been wrapped in spider silk before falling into the sticky, icky tree resin, and since it was a little tied up at the moment of submersion, it was drowned in the auburn-hued substance and preserved for all time. What a way to go. Tongue in cheek. Paleontologist Dr. Julia Clark led research on the hyoid bones of non avian dinosaurs. The hyoid bone is a very delicate set of interconnected splints of bone that held to provide internal support for the tongue and muscles that move it, and it plays a role in the functions of the throat as well. Not all dinosaur specimens have been preserved with this very fragile set of bones but those that have were analyzed and compared with modern relatives, birds and crocodiles. This was to help determine what role the tongues of dinosaurs play in their day-to-day -day activity. They found that theropod non-avian dinosaurs had short, simple hyoid bones, which paralleled the short, simple hyoid bones of modern crocodilians, which have tongues that are firmly attached to the lower jaw and do not move. Avian dinosaurs of the present have very complex hyoid bones that are helpful in maneuvering the tongue as a hand or third limb, since they obviously cannot use their wings. It was also discovered that more avian dinosaurs had more complex hyoids, like modern birds, while the bigger theropods that were incapable of flight had the simpler mechanisms. On the other hand, the plant-eating dinosaurs of the Ornithischian clade and Sauropodomorpha group had convergently evolved more complex hyoid bones to help them grasp food, since most couldn't use their forelimbs. This could mean all the paleoart you love showing ferocious carnivores lolling their tongues may not have been totally scientifically correct. But who cares when it looks so cool? Artistic license. Eh, whatever. Cantholipan gonzalezi. Ankylosaurs are rad. Big, dumb, heavy, coffee table shaped herbivores with dangerous weapons on their backside. What more could you want? 
Any new finds are great to add to the repertoire of these ancient turtle dragons. And a new member has graced the front pages of the scientific journals once again. A Cantholopan Gonzalez eye. This armored dinosaur was discovered in Mexico, which is rare since most of Mexico is not the best for preserving fossil material. However, it's becoming clear that there was a long, burdened history of prehistoric life in Mexico, because more and more finds are trickling out of the new fossil sites they have. A cantholopan was decked out in a suit of osteoderms that covered most of the animal's back, neck and shoulders and flanks, and probably had a paired set of spikes protecting its butt and tail, and it needed it since it had no club at the end of it. Electrorano Limoe. The amber continues to flow, and it has brought us an amphibian this time. The Burmese amber of Myanmar has graced us with four perfectly preserved specimens of mid Cretaceous frogs named Electrorano Limoe that would have escaped the rock record in the humid jungles of Asia were it not for the amber. These finds are spectacular, not just for what they preserved, but for providing new examples of organisms living in acidic tropical environments that would have otherwise remained unfossilized. Ambolestes showy. Contrary to popular belief, the mammals around the time of the dinosaurs were thriving. Though mostly incapable of moving up the ecological ladder, many were quite successful in the insectivore niche they inhabited. And every once in a while, mammals were able to gain the evolutionary upper hand over the reptilian and avian contemporaries. A new mammal from the late Cretaceous J. Hull biota of China has been described as Ambolestes showy, and represents a nearly complete skeleton preserving the hyoid bones and a bony ring which holds the eardrum, called the tympanicum. Junzi Imperialis. The studies of archaeology and paleontology join forces in the discovery and description of a previously unknown genus of gibbon from China. The remains were discovered inside of an ancient tomb in Shanxi, China, which also held the remains of humans and dates back to 2200 to 2300 years ago. The discovery of the very toothy skull of Junzi Imperialis provides record of a previously only rumored group of apes in China that recently went extinct, but whether that is due to humans or not remains to be seen. 